Now, you may have heard of ChatGPT. It's a popular online chatbot which is powered by artificial intelligence. And you can ask it to write essays for you, write computer code, even give you creative ideas. Well, it was developed by the American company OpenAI, and ChatGPT is trained on the internet so it can understand and generate human like text. Sounds too good to be true? Well, it's prompting concerns in some academic circles that students could use it to plagiarise their essays. In fact, ChatGPT has already obtained good pass grades in a medical licensing exam and also a master in business administration paper. It's led a Princeton University student to create GPT-0. Now, that's a program that can spot when AI has been used. Our technology correspondent, Zoe Kleiman, explains how this all works. I think the thing to bear in mind about ChatGPT is that it's extremely good. What it does is it answers queries uh, based on everything that was up, uh, on the internet up until the year 2021. So it's not live connected. It can't tell you about current affairs. It can't, for example, give you the time. Um, but what it can do is give you a pretty solid answer to pretty much any question. And it can also do that in the style of anything you want. So you can ask it to write a song in the style of Taylor Swift or you know, write an introduction in the style of a TV news presenter, you should be worried because it does it extremely well. It's probably best for me to uh, to show you this in action. Um, so here is a video of me having a go at it a little earlier. First question, explain chat GPT in two sentences. ChatGPT is a chatbot trained using the GPT-3 language model. It uses natural language processing to generate responses to user input in a conversational manner. Not so conversational so far. Let's try another question. Are you alive? No, I'm a virtual assistant created by a computer program. I do not have consciousness or the ability to feel emotions like a human. I exist only to provide information and assist with tasks within the limitations of my programming. Zoe, that's absolutely extraordinary. Some deep questions there. But in terms of you saying I should be worried, I am worried. I'm not the only one that's worried, though. Just talk us through the concerns with this. So there are there are a few issues with it. Number one is it is so good, you know, that there are already examples of students using it to write their homework for them. Uh, if I was a student right now, I think I'd be delighted, uh, you know, to know that you could just you could literally just say to it, write me 500 words about the end of the Second World War and, and you will get them in about a minute its time under a minute. Um, so teachers are sort of saying, well, we can spot text that's plagiarised from the internet because it just doesn't sound like the voice of the student. You know, we think we can tell. It's difficult to know, isn't it? Because we're never going to know the ones that they don't catch. And there are also concerns that people could use it to write university applications for them, you know, and that it completely changes the model we use currently to test, uh, to test people's ability and achievement. The other concern is it doesn't tell you where it's got information from. It presents it all as fact. So it can very easily spout out misinformation that it has found somewhere on the internet. And it wouldn't necessarily warn you uh, that it might not be true. And and thirdly, there are some cybersecurity experts who are warning that it can be manipulated into writing malware, computer viruses, uh, which is also potentially a very serious uh, problem if it actually happens for real. So the concerns are pretty stark, actually. I mean, it, it feels too good to be true. There are concerns around it. But just in terms of in terms of being able to spot it, there is a program that has been written, I mentioned at the beginning, that to, to potentially spot it in order to to work it out. But this is this is a, a chatbot that has been banned in some countries because people are so aware of the concerns it raises. Yes, that's right. Actually, OpenAI itself uh, launched a tool on Tuesday, which it says can spot tech text that's been written by humans and text that's been written by artificial intelligence. Now, that's something that I think really quite heavily needs to be put to the test, um, you know, very, very rigorously. Um, it is being used in lots of positive ways as well. Lots of people are using it to write things like marketing copy, website copy. Um, so, you know, it, it's not all bad news. And it's potentially the future of search. Some experts are saying, essentially, you know, rather than put in a, a query into a search engine, 
engine and get thousands of pages of links to wade yourself through, why not just ask a question and get one distinct answer? It's going to save you a lot of time and be a lot better to use. For that reason, there are lots of people chasing this. Google uh, is already also working on a, a similar language model called Lambda. You may remember this one because one of the engineers who worked on it said it was so good, he thought it was sentient. Now Google fired the engineer and it's always denied this claim. Um, but it gives you an example, doesn't it, of, of A, how good they are and B, how useful they could become. Microsoft, for example, it has said that it's going to invest billions in OpenAI, the company behind this. So it obviously also uh, can see its enormous potential. You know, we're only on generation three, version three of ChatGPT and millions of people are using it and are very impressed with its results. So when version four comes out and OpenAI says it's working on that now, then we're, we're going to see an even more marked improvement. I think, you know, you have to bear in mind with these things, they've been around for a long time. OpenAI was set up in 2015, so they've been working on it quietly for seven years and it's only now uh, that we're seeing the fruits of that labour. Might not surprise you to know, Kazia, that one of the co-founders at the beginning was Elon Musk. He's no longer involved in the project, uh, but he certainly knows all about it. I bet he certainly does. I bet he's watching it very, very closely. We're going to have a specialist in artificial intelligence in the next few hours, so stay with us here on Global on BBC World News.